Today we are recording a video to talk about what life is like as a CEO or more specifically to me what is life like as a 29 year old CEO and CEO of Gymshark. Yeah. Ready? Indiana, you got the holy grail, shape is like a paradise, got me thinking holy hell, revel in your temper, every minute a new adventure, I make dust like Mookie, I can hit it in. I got a let him in flow, other artists can jack it, I'm not judging cause the jury can figure the facts, now sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I get a little out, my mind, my mind, I'm off the middle now. Did it look good? So I've now been in the job for about nine months and it has been by far the busiest nine months of my life. I, think, I guess in this video, what I want to do is shine a little bit of a light on what life is like for me personally doing this job and maybe just some of the things that I've learned in my first nine months in this job. I guess the first thing that I want to talk about that, I, that has really been noti noticeable for me is sort of work life. And I've heard the term sort of work life balance and I'm not convinced by that because I think it's less about having a balance and switching one or the other off. It's about like integrating the two for me. If you can have this truly integrated existence in terms of your family life, personal life, and your professional life, I think that's a, a real, really healthy and productive way of working. So every single day I'll be up generally no later than 5.30, but I'll tend to try and wake up at five, and that's wherever I am in the world. I like being up in early in the morning, and I like doing things in the morning, and I have lots of most of my energy in the morning, and I prefer to solve the biggest problems that I'm trying to solve at that time earlier in the morning. And I have my breakfast and I get out of the house quickly and I try and get into the office for any anywhere around sort of seven o'clock. And then I would generally work through until depending on what's going on in the day. On average, I would say 6, 6.30 p.m. So it's not actually too late. Obviously, if it's a particularly busy point in time, then that'll extend out. But what I really like to do is finish the work if I can between 6 and 6.30 and then go to the gym between 6.30 and 7.30 so that I can then get home and spend time with my wife. I'm really warm. We're in Colorado at the moment and it's warm, very warm here, so I'm gonna take this off. So personally for me, I work a lot, but I genuinely love what I do, so it doesn't ever really feel like work. And that's something that's been consistent in my job at Gymshark ever since beginning the, the company in 2012. The one thing I would say that really helps and allows me to do that is I have an incredibly, incredibly supportive wife and I have an incredibly, incredibly supportive family and friend group and colleagues set around me, which is incredibly important and it allows me to work the long hours that I do. We're going to it. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm videoing. <laughs> and genuinely, I think there are probably areas I could do better. I think I could better manage my time. I think there are certain things that I spend my time doing which is probably not as efficient as it could be. So I think there's room for improvement for me there. But first and foremost, the hours as a CEO are incredibly, incredibly long. Because, like I said at the start of the video, you are ultimately responsible. If there are things going on in the business, you can't like just move it off down the line. You have to hit it head on and you have to try and solve the big problems as quickly and as effectively as you possibly can. So sort of linked to working hours, and this is particularly big for me working in Gymshark because Gymshark is such a global business in terms of the, the split of sales. Travel happens a lot and I'm fortunate in the sense of I've traveled a lot for a long, long time other than during the COVID period. Albeit in this new role as CEO, I would say the travel is a lot more regimented, it's a lot more organized, but it's probably a lot more and a lot more regular, I would say. So before COVID, I would travel, I think the busiest year I had was about 50 odd flights in the year, about an average of a flight a week. And most of that was long haul to places like Australia and North America. But prior to COVID and the other roles that I'd been in, whether it was chief of brand or marketing, or even just a more overarching founder role, it wasn't as planned and it would be an event come up, go to the event. If it it was you know meeting with the factory go there get out to the Hong Kong office it, it would just sort of come and it was a almost like a natural schedule whereas now I will have the next I think I've got like nine to twelve months worth of what we call minimum travel scheduled so I'll have generally a minimum of a week a month in the Denver office and that will be scheduled now for nine months and we tend to just keep that rolling and keep nine months in advance scheduled from a minimum travel perspective and that helps because it helps plan the diary so by having the that week a month scheduled in advance it means that we can just manage around all the different things that are going on uh, on a monthly basis. So that's quite good for me because one, it means I know exactly where I'm going to be in advance, whereas before I didn't ever really know. It lets other people know where I'm going to be so that again, as we are planning things moving forward, they'll know Ben's in Denver for this week in September so we can plan things around there. But it also means that the travel's a lot cheaper as well. So if you're booking in advance, then you, you know, you're getting cheaper travel. Four, it was always last minute travel and it was a lot more difficult. And booking it well in advance is it means that I can then bring more the people that really need to be on these trips with me. So I work with 
James, who's right here now, who does all the videography and editing and basically the channel strategy for all of my social channels. We've got Zoe, who is my EA, who basically helps all my organization um, and planning from like an executive assistant point of view. So she comes on every trip now as well. It means that by booking in advance, I can bring other people on the trip that really need to be here too. So that's really, really important. Now that's only splitting my time between the two offices, right? Outside of COVID as well, I need to be visiting the offices in Hong Kong and Mauritius. It's a little bit, or has been a little bit more difficult to get out to Hong Kong and Mauritius because of the pandemic in, the, in recent years. So on average, I could be looking at 10 days a month just visiting the other offices. Now on top of that, there are events, there are are factory meetings and supplier meetings there are just random impromptu meetings athlete meetings there are lots of things that happen all around the world so outside of that week to 10 days a month traveling there are other things that I'll also spend my time doing around the world so I might fly out to Barcelona or somewhere in Europe to meet a factory for example I might fly out to New York to meet an athlete or go to an event or you know like I'm looking to go to Ryan and Katie's next fight the likelihood is they'll be um, outside of the UK so there's lots of travel on top of that but that is more impromptu it's more you know as it comes up we'll, we'll plan it in but in summary as a CEO particularly of a global business like Gymshark there is a lot of travel and you have to get used to being on a plane for me the the big thing was learning how to be productive on a plane and being productive whilst traveling because what I used to do was get on the plane and just sort of sit there and not do anything and wait for it to be over and then I'd land and I'd try and try and work whereas what I'm trying to do now and slowly getting better at is regardless of whether I'm on a plane or a train or how I'm traveling around like the work day needs to continue I still need to be getting uh, back to my messages uh, moving through my emails reading any documents that I need to be reading and just basically constantly being productive regardless of whether or not I'm personally in transit so the other thing as well as being a CEO is I think people feel like you've got all the answers and at once it's important to be you know meticulous in your planning and constantly working on self-development and trying to you know understand the business better than anyone else can or, or better than anyone else does you don't always have all the answers so there's a couple of things there is one as a CEO you will make mistakes that's something else I've learned very quickly is you will make mistakes but what you need to do is own them and learn from them rapidly then apply those learnings as quickly as you can that's incredibly incredibly important and because you won't always have the answers what you need to do is try and build out a network or a scenario where you can try and meet people or you know people who do if I'm trying to solve a problem in a particular area of the business which isn't my complete and utter strength then I need to know people that can help me get to a solution or just help me solve that problem so that's really important as well you won't always know the answers you will make mistakes mistakes are inevitable and they're necessary in terms of the learning process but what you can't do is let the mistakes that you make define you you need to learn from them and you need to apply those learnings rapidly rapidly and effectively. So long working hours, lots of travel, and then finally there are a lot of different people that you have to constantly be speaking to. And this could be talking to factories, for example, or partners to the business. This could be talking to internal members of the Gymshark team, people that directly work with and report to myself in the leadership team. It could be working with General Atlantic, who invested in the business a couple of years ago, and working with those guys. There's lots of different people that you constantly have to be interacting with as a CEO. Each one is incredibly, incredibly important, and they'll look at the gym, uh, the gym sharp business or the business from a different perspective and that's really 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 important but managing all of those people and making sure that I personally am allocating the right amount of time to them is something that I'm probably still working on and still need to do a better job at but something that I'm really really enjoying and one of the reasons that I love it so much is you get so many different perspectives on the business and you can absorb all those perspectives distill them and try and work that out into the actual gym sharp business strategy and try and work out how those different people can uh, help grow the business so it's it's this constantly, constantly growing and changing role. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love it so much because I've done lots of different jobs at Gymshark from the chief of brand role, the chief of marketing role, chief of tech, chief of product. And this has been by far my favorite. One, because it's been by far the most challenging and it's been incredibly, incredibly difficult the last nine months for me to sort of level myself up to be strong enough to do this role. But also it's just a constantly changing environment and you're working with so many great people that it is great fun as well. So I'm trying to think as well. So I'm nine months into this job and it is incredibly difficult if I'm honest. I love this job and I couldn't see myself doing anything anytime soon but equally it is so challenging and it's so tough and what I need to do is constantly do what is right for the business and the brand and ultimately the customer in the long term and that means that I've had to take some really really difficult and tough decisions so for example uh, recently 
we've, um, we, ha we announced that we were going to restructure the business. And the reason that we've decided to do that was to really double down on our growth here in North America, but also really prepare Gymshark for its next phase of growth. Because what you'll find as businesses grow is what maybe worked in the past doesn't necessarily work in the present and may not be the best way of you know, helping the business grow to that next level in the future as well. So what we had to do is make an announcement where we make 121 roles in the business redundant. Now, further down the line, we're going to be hiring into much more roles. We're hiring over 100 people to help support our London retail store. And we're also hiring another 100 people into the business. So we actually net out that the business is growing. But in that restructure, it means that certain people's jobs will be lost. And for me, who's, you know, I've dedicated my business, uh, my life to this business, and I absolutely adore it. And I'm so thankful for every single individual that has contributed in any way to the growth of this company. It's heartbreaking to have to go through that. Um, and it's even more heartbreaking to see how it's affected people. So whilst this is a super exciting job and I do love it, there has been some incredibly, incredibly difficult decisions that I've had to make and difficult periods that we've had to manage through. Here you go. Happy. Okay, now that's tough. Now I have to go and do a working day, my friend. Mm -hmm. That's a tough lesson, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is a, an amazing, amazing job and the good times are so incredibly great, but the bad times are incredibly bad as well. So yeah, it, it's, listen, it's an amazing job. I love it, but it is so, so, so tough. I think someone asked me the other day that we did a, a London uh, market stall and someone said, oh, what's it like going back into the CEO role? And I had to explain to them that even though I was like CEO in the early days of the business, there were like 10 members of staff and it was a very, very small business. So I almost wouldn't even count that as being a CEO role. It just wasn't like for me, a CEO role is a, you know, a, a role in a larger, more complex organization, which is where it's at now. So I'm not really coming back into the role. I'm doing this job for the first time and I've never ever done anything as complex as this. I will just throw at you some quick fire sort of questions. Mm -hmm. So like, um, what would you say is your best moment as a CEO? To be honest, I don't know yet because it's so early and it has actually, it, listen, it's been an incredibly, incredibly tough year. I would say, honestly, the best moment so far has just been when, I guess when Steve first asked me, because I felt, oh, you know, that was such a compliment that he thought I was strong enough to be able to do the role. Worst moment as a CEO? Worst moment, worst moment was having to make the announcement to the business that we were restructuring and we were making redundancies in the business. Something big that you've learned as a yeah. Something big that I've learned, uh, you won't have all the answers and you will make mistakes. You just need to learn from them. One thing you'd like to achieve as a CEO of Gymshark? You'll probably know from anyone that's watched my content, it's like self-development is incredibly, incredibly important to me. So something I want to achieve is building Gymshark into a company where individuals can become the best version of themselves possible and I want to be able to support that. And I want to have this like alumni of individuals that at some point will end up, you know, moving on and leaving Gymshark. But I want people to know Gymshark as the place where brilliant, brilliant people become the best version of themselves. And we have the best alumni of staff in the world. Do you think age makes a difference as you have been um, in your life experiences? So I'm confident. I've had like a lot of life experiences jam packed into a very short period of time. Like I first, you know, pretty much started traveling the world at 19 years old as the company kicked off and I've been doing it outside of the COVID period ever since. And because of the rapid growth of the business and all the different jobs that I've done, I've been fortunate enough to fit so much into such a short period of time. Um, you know, with age can come experience and perspective and all these things. And I think that will come, you know, for me as well with age. But right now I'm, yeah, I'm happy and I don't think it makes too much of a difference in the short term. Are there any areas about being a CEO that make you nervous? Not at the moment. I just try and approach everything, every learning and everything with, you know, a, a viewpoint of opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to grow, try and be as open-minded with everything as possible. I think we need to do more like this because what I want to do is I really want to shed the light on what life is like as a CEO. I know right now we're at this point in time where there are so many young kids that want to be a CEO one day and I would implore you to do everything you can and develop yourself as best you can to become a CEO. It is an incredibly fulfilling job and I genuinely feel like I've got the best job in the world. That doesn't mean it, come, it doesn't come without challenges. It absolutely comes with so many challenges and it will work you so incredibly hard. And it's an incredibly, incredibly difficult job. But like I said, it's incredibly fulfilling as well. So we'll do more videos like this. If you've got any more questions you want me to answer, please put them in the comment box below. If you want to see what a week in the life of a CEO is like, then just hit the video right here and check it out.